Hi, my name is James. I work with Nexus Youth and Family Services, and today we're going to talk about anxiety and depression in children and teens. Um, we'll be identifying kind of the signs and symptoms and then talking about um, kind of what we can do or kind of how we should respond. So I want to start with talking about what anxiety is. Um, anxiety is the mind and body's reaction to a stressful, dangerous, or unfamiliar situation. Sometimes how I describe this in sessions is I will talk about um, seeing a bear and how that will um, kind of cause us to feel stressed and um, the healthy kind of anxiety, right? We want to get out of the situation. Um, and so it's kind of our response to a dangerous or maybe an unfamiliar, maybe they're, we're in a crowd and so we, we're not familiar with the crowd or we're not familiar with the group. And so there's a heightened level of um, kind of stress and anxiety about the situation. So there's two things too that scientists believe have causes in kind of in combination or, or even separate but can cause anxiety and kind of anxiety disorders the first one is genetics um, sometimes families have a higher than average kind of amount of anxiety disorders um, they're just naturally anxious the second one is environment so maybe a stressful or traumatic event um, in their life has caused them to feel anxious or anxiety or heighten their level of anxiousness now I'd like to talk about common signs and symptoms of anxiety. Um, I just want to read a few and kind of go through them. Um, the first one that I kind of really want to talk about is the constant and persistent worry. And that's going to be very important. Um, one thing that we're going to be looking at is how often and how long and kind of what's the intensity of the worry or anxiousness. Um, that's going to be a big differential between maybe just anxiety um, or uh, a, a disorder. Um, something we're also going to be looking at is restlessness, um, maybe sign, physical signs and symptoms such as stomach aches or headaches. That's going to be a big indicator. Um, How is it impacting school is something we're going to look at as well and maybe their um, behavior at home. So are they kind of restless, agitated all the time or irritable? Um, maybe they're avoiding certain people or situations. Um, and so we'll kind of do a holistic look at all of those. So I did want to share with you a couple of different types of anxieties. So the first one is a phobia. Um, and we kind of think maybe we'll poke fun at phobias, right? Maybe there's, there's the fear of long words. Um, that's a phobia, but sometimes it's fear of heights, uh, maybe of um, certain animals or insects. Um, the next one is separation anxiety. We'll see this in kids and in teens as well, um, but kind of fear of being away from family or trusted adult, right? When you're um, at drop off and um, the kid doesn't want to leave you, um, is clinging onto your leg, we'll see that kind of in the, in the small amount of separation anxiety. Um, kind of generalized anxiety, um, which is kind of constant worrying for months at a time panic attacks, which is um, kind of an onset um, increase in anxiety or stress um, that can either stop you in your tracks or some, you know, some people need to kind of move and they'll get away quickly. Um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, these are kind of thoughts and actions that just simply can't stop. They, they're, they're, they're compulsive to do this kind of action. Um, and then the last one is post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, this is stress kind of induced by a traumatic or terrible experience um, or memory. Now I want to talk about what depression is. Um, and the medical definition of depression is kind of the persistent sadness. So when it occurs, you'll see uh, maybe hopelessness, helplessness, uh, maybe feelings of loneliness. Um, and in this, when this sadness, persistent sadness, um, it can disrupt um, kind of people, the, the lifestyle um, and it maybe affect every area. Um, some things that we'll also look for is acting out, isolating or withdrawing, um, or maybe not participating in activities that they normally would have enjoyed. Um, or maybe kind of on the serious side, it's more of self-harm and suicidal thoughts. And if this is the case, please always take this information seriously um, and talk with a professional or um, reach your local emergency um, team. 
So now I kind of want to talk about common signs and symptoms of depression. Um, the signs and symptoms of a child's depression can include, you know, changes in appetite, either increase or decrease. Um, we're definitely going to see a change in sleep pattern, um, whether it's maybe sleeplessness or um, more kind of on the excessive amount. So kind of even um, feeling tired, feeling low. Um, there's a even kind of an irritability with it. Maybe they're withdrawn. Um, maybe they're there's going to be some difficulty concentrating. We will see some kind of physical symptoms as well with stomach aches and headaches um, th that may not have a specific cause um, that they can find. Um, so there's a, there's a few more that you can read on here, but those are kind of some of the big ones. Again, we don't want to just pick one and go, oh, the, you know, this is it. They have it. It's, it's kind of we want to see multiple of these. So now I'd like to address a very important question. How do I know if my child or teen needs help? Well, here's a couple of questions that we can kind of, go, we'll go through. Um, and this could be a great identifier. Um, so are you noticing any different patterns in their behavior? Some, some things that we talked about, right? Changing in eating or sleeping, excessive or um, maybe excessive eating, excessive sleeping, or kind of the opposite where it's, um, less eating, less sleeping, um, withdrawn or isolating? Are they not engaging with people or friends or family or even teachers or maybe even um, kind of different activities that they were involved in as much as they used to? Um, so are they withdrawn more? Are they not willing to talk to you? Um, do they worry more about certain things? Are they Is that sadness or loneliness or worriedness kind of, again, persistent for a long period of time? Have you noticed a long, you know, a different pattern in their life for a long period of time and maybe the last question is have there been any significant life changes losses or events in their life um, that's something to look through and again what we want to do is not uh, pick one of these and go and kind of diagnose based upon one of these questions um, for example um, is your teen withdrawn and not willing to talk to you now this could be just normal teenage behavior um, again we want to kind of notice patterns in their life and kind of ask all of these kind of questions and maybe this could be a good identifier um, and kind of just a warning sign of hey okay there's there's something else going on so now i'd like to talk about kind of the treatment for anxiety and depression um, there's a variety of different ways so there's going to therapy or seeing a counselor um, there's relaxation trainings um, which is also known as mindfulness training, um, medication or supplements, maybe some vitamins, but again, consult a doctor before um, kind of pursuing that option. Uh, maybe some psychological assessments or testing um, for specific disorders, maybe such as ADHD or maybe anxiety or um, depression disorder. Um, and one question I wanted to answer is maybe what's the difference between a psychiatrist, psychologist, and counselor um, or therapist? That's a very great question. So um, psychiatrists are medical doctors that can prescribe medication and also um, can engage in therapy, um, kind of the relaxation training, um, the cognitive behavioral therapy, EMDR, kind of the, the things that counselors can do as well or therapists. Psychologists can assess, um, can make diagnostic assessments, um, but are not able to prescribe medication and therapists or counselors are able to um, give assessments for kind of a understanding, but not a diagnostic of kind of where the levels of anxiety and depression are, um, and can also use approach specific approaches, um, such as relaxation training, um, or EMDR, cognitive behavioral therapy, or play therapy, um, to kind of treat um, anxiety and depression. So now I'd like to recommend some resources for parents. Um, so these are kind of some things that'll help you understand maybe how to come alongside your kid or teenager, um, maybe even how to respond to certain situations or certain things, or maybe to look for um, certain anxiety or um, depression signs and symptoms um, and some workbooks that might be helpful as well. And here are some resources recommended for children and teens. Um, again, parents, you can use this um, and kind of I'd watch 
kind of the content or read through the content as well uh, as it may be helpful for you. Um, but a couple of apps that I'd like to recommend is Headspace for Kids, um, Breathe, Relax, and Calm. Um, these are all kind of that relaxation training or mindfulness training that we talked about a little bit earlier. Some YouTube um, resources or videos um, and then some act exercises that you can kind of uh, do together. Again, my name is James. I work with Nexus Youth and Family Services. If you haven't already, you should check out our website um, to kind of find more specific information about our approach, our counselors, and our area of specialty. Um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can visit us or call us um, at Nexus Youth and Family Services in Jackson. Um, we have the address and the phone number below. Uh, thanks for watching.